welcome all to the Revenge of the Sith novelization series. So if you don't know what this is, we're just going to be making videos on the Revenge of the Sith novelization. And uh, that's a book that goes in deep, uh, way more details of things that happened in Revenge of the Sith that, you know, maybe that we didn't have time to see that was, it just happened so quick or just we're not in the movie. But it's very interesting. And today we're going to be uh, talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi and what he was thinking um, during the beginning scene of Revenge of the Sith when him and Obi-Wan were trying to find the Chancellor and help him escape. So it goes back a long time. So just sit back and relax and enjoy this video as we read a few paragraphs from the Revenge of the Sith novelization and then we break it all down after. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. A phenomenal pilot who doesn't like to fly. A devastating warrior who'd rather not fight. A negotiator without peer who frankly prefers to sit alone in a quiet cave and meditate. Jedi Master. General in the Grand Army of the Republic. Member of the Jedi Council. And yet, inside, he feels like he's none of these things. Inside, he still feels like a Padawan. It is a truism of the Jedi Order that a Jedi's, Jedi Knight's education truly begins only when he becomes a master. That everything important about being a master is learned from one student. Obi-Wan feels the truth of this every day. He sometimes dreams of when he was a Padawan, in fact, as well as feeling. He dreams that his own master, Qui-Gon Jinn, did not die at the plasma fuel generator core in Theed. He dreams that his master's wise guiding hand is still with him. But Qui-Gon's death is an old pain, one with which he long ago came to terms. A Jedi does not cling to the past, and Obi-Wan Kenobi knows too, that to have lived his life without being master to Anakin Skywalker would have left him a different man, a lesser man. Anakin has taught him so much. Obi-Wan sees so much of Qui-Gon and Anakin that sometimes it hurts his heart. At the very least, Anakin mirrors Qui-Gon's flair for the dramatic and his casual disregard for rules. Training Anakin and fighting beside him all these years has unlocked something inside Obi-Wan. It's as though Anakin has rubbed off of him a bit and has, a loose, and has loosened that clenched jaw insistence on absolute correctness that Qui-Gon always said was his greatest flaw. Obi-Wan Kenobi has learned to relax. He smiles now and sometimes even jokes, and has become known for the wisdom gentle humor can provide. Though he does not know it, his relationship with Anakin has molded him into the great Jedi Qui-Gon always said he might someday be. It is characteristic of Obi-Wan that he is entirely unaware of this. Being named the, to the council came as a complete surprise even now. He is sometimes astonished by the faith that the Jedi Council has in his abilities and the credit they give to his wisdom. Greatness was never his ambition. He wants only to perform whatever task he is given to the best of his ability. He is respected throughout the Jedi Order for his insight as well as his warrior skill. He has become the hero of the next generation of Padawans. He is a Jedi their masters hold up as a model. He is the being that the Council assigns to their most important missions. He is modest, centered, and always kind. He is the ultimate Jedi. And he is proud to be Anakin Skywalker's best friend. So we have a lot to break down here, but this really did describe Obi-Wan Kenobi more than I thought that this, you know, novelization is and does. But so if this really is how it begins, this is an awesome beginning. One of my favorite parts of the book so far of what I've read. And I find this very interesting how it's, you know, describing Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, um, you know, confirming some of the things that we think in the movie, such as he's a phenomenal pilot, but he doesn't like to fly when he says at the beginning, flying is for joys. That's what he's probably thinking. So he is a good pilot, but of a good pilot, but he doesn't like to fly. Um, he is, you know, he, it really is describing him as, you know, a perfect Jedi and a perfect role model that, as it said, that many people can look up to. They want to look up to him as hopefully be as good as him at all that he is a good negotiator a good warrior but he doesn't want to be a good warrior well he doesn't want to fight he just wants to be a good jedi and as he says a keeper of peace and then once again 
is talking about how, you know, Anakin has really changed him, but has it been for the good or has it been for the bad? As well as, you know, him reminiscing on Qui-Gon and how, you know, Anakin really, dis- uh, it he reminded him of Qui-Gon because he spent so many years with Qui-Gon and now he spent so many years with Anakin and the we can you can see the difference of how they must have gotten gotten along when uh, Anakin was younger and he said as Obi-Wan Kenobi knows too that to have lived his life without being An- Anakin Skywalker mastered Anakin Skywalker would have left him a different man but would it have been for the good or for the bad well he says a lesser man is that the truth well he did learn a lot from anakin throughout the clone wars we see that maybe throughout the years that we don't really know that much such as in between episode one and episode two but as well um it meant he mentions that he's learned to relax more and you know the closer they anakin and him have bonded more we see him in episode two he didn't really like to you know he didn't really make that many jokes but you know in episode three he he's a it's a fun character to watch and you know it's not only more enjoyable for him when he smiles more and things like that but you know it's enjoyable to watch as well when we watch the movies um, you know the tv shows and all of that and how just as he says how much humor can really do to a person and you know his relationship with anakin has molded him into the great jedi qui-gon always said he might someday be so it always come down some comes down to Qui-Gon and how much Obi-Wan really misses him but you know like he says he has to move on with training Anakin the best that he can they also said that he was you know sometimes astonished thinking that he was actually a part of the Jedi Council um and him being humble to think that wow I cannot believe that, that I'm a part of something such as uh, the Jedi Council and you know how important that it is and how much that you know people really look up to him and they give him credit for all of his all of the um his wisdom for being a great teacher and he said greatness was never his ambition so once again a really good jedi i was described here at the beginning of the revenge of the sith novelization and it really gets you in the picture of how good of a teacher obi-wan is especially towards anakin even though they don't really have the same type of personality obi-wan is kind of learning a few things from anakin and of course anakin being obi-wan's student is learning lots of things from him and you know just to, this is one point that we're going to make a video on this one point that you know it's not really it's, it's a gradually it's what gradually happens with anakin now people not are not always agreeing with him and when he has to go back to save his mother for example when obi-wan says don't please uh, we will do that soon and then he you know ends up going there to tatooine and seeing that his mother was dying and you know it's his first step to the dark side i believe in that moment but you know we're gonna make a plenty of videos on on that because there's so much stuff to uncover from the revenge of the sith novelization that we don't see in the movies but um, in the meantime hope you enjoyed this one and may the force be with you always <laughs>